Hello everyone. In this screencast, we will be discussing uh, something on partitioning. Um, so, you know, as the name suggests, partitioning is essentially you divide the data. So, just imagine you have a huge table and, um, you know, it, it has some sequential numbers from 1 to 1 million or something like that. So, what you could do is basically chop off that table into, you know, certain ranges. So you'll have something like one to hundred thousand, hundred thousand to two hundred thousand, and so on and so forth. So essentially, what you're doing is, um, you know, kind of, um, you know, chopping this entire table into ten different buckets. So now, now when whenever someone queries it, it 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 basically searches just those particular buckets, and you know the query also runs a bit faster because you know all these are divided into their separate file groups. Um, so, you know, th that is essentially one of the main reasons why you would use partitioning that, you know, your tables are pretty huge. Of course, there are a lot of other uses as such, but just to keep it very simple and, you know, um, try to get that idea. So what I'm going to do right now is um, let me just make a DB called as say partition DB. Or before doing that, let me just show you something like go to files and then you know, I'm just going to explore the MDF and the LDF locations. So, oops. So here you see that, you know, all these databases essentially have two files. One is the MDF file and that's where your data gets stored. And the second is the log files or the LDF files. Um, so what we are going to essentially do right now is that we are going to uh, split this MDF files into a couple of other files, into secondary files, and um, that's essentially what we are going to do in partitioning. So I'm just going to minimize this. And uh, so before doing that, there are a couple of steps that uh, we need to perform. Like, you know, at, at, at the very first beginning, we need to create something called as a partition function wherein you know we're going to say how we're going to divide the data and then um, secondly what we need to do is actually create a partition scheme now these two are like totally independent of the table right you know this is something which you can apply across different tables so um, let me just start off by creating a partition function and so let's do something like this let me create partition db. This is a simple db. It has two files right now. And you know, one is um, the MDF file and the other is basically the LDF file. And uh, what I'm going to do is the first step that is to create the partition function. So to create the partition function is pretty simple. It's called create partition function and I'm going to give it some name like customer partition function. So we'll, we'll build the customer table, just a simple table which has say customer ID from 1 to 50,000 or something like that. We, we'll just build it on the fly. And we're going to say on range right as range right for values say 0 to 1000 then the next bucket should be till 2000, then from 2001 to 3000, 4000, and 5000. And that's it. So once we create that, oops, did I make a mistake? Yep. One thing what you need to do is, you know, you need to specify the data type of the partition key that we'll be using. In this case, it will basically be um, something like an employee ID or something. So that has to be an integer. Now let's try that again. And we have created the partition function. So if we go here, you'll see the partition function that we just created. So again, if you see, we have never mentioned the table name or anything at this point of time. We are just saying that, okay, we're creating five different buckets and you need to basically divide a particular table, whichever table I'm going to associate this, you know, and put it into this five different buckets. And we have explicitly specified the ranges also. The second thing what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a partition scheme. So again, the, the syntax is exactly the same, create partition scheme. And I'm going to call this as customer part scheme. As 
partition and I need to just you know associate the function that I just created so I'm going to just copy and paste it over here and then basically I need to say in what all file groups so I need to you know put these uh, data so 0 to 1000 will I'll just call it a file group called as fgp1 I haven't created the file groups as of now but I'll definitely create it fgp2 fgp3 fgp4 fgp5 and anything about 5000 should go to the last bucket that is fgp6 so this is some just random names I'm giving I'm going to create these file groups just in a minute but you know just I'm just uh, creating the schema as of now um oops. so i'm going to right click over here go to properties and i'm going to add a couple of file groups over here and i'm going to call this as fgp1 fgp2 fgp3 fgp4 and fgp5 and fgp6 and once that's done i'm going to give it some logical name so I'm going to call this as FG1 FG2 FG3 FG4 FG5 and I need one more and that should be FG6 and I need to associate this with the proper file groups that I just created FGP2 FGP3 FGP4 5 and 6 so once this is done, if I go back to my and just filter the date modified, you should see that, you know, a couple of NDF files also along with this. So let's try running this. So yeah, I, I was able to create the partition scheme. So essentially what we have done is we have created a function, we have created a scheme. Now what we need to do is basically associate it with a table where basically the employee ID or some integer key is going to have values like thousand or below thousand, then greater than thousand and so on and so forth. So that it can automatically just put it into the different buckets. Uh, let me just create a table and I'm going to create a very simple table called something like let's call this as partition itself and that should have an employee id and i'm going to have that as an int identity so that you know it can just auto increment let me just run a while loop or something and then populate about 10 to 50 thousand rows or something like that and i'm going to introduce one more column called as employee date and then that will basically be just date time and I'm, I need to say that okay this is basically going to use the cust partition scheme and the employee ID is basically the key that I'm passing over here so let's create this table and we should see it in the tables and now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to run a while loop and then populate um, you know a couple of thousand rows in it so that we can just see how it divides them into you know different file groups or different partitions so I'm going to say set i equal to zero and while i is less than say 50,000 or say 20,000 or just 10,000 is also fine because we would be easily able to test that. I'm going to say begin and I'm going to insert into partition um, employee date values and I'm just going to populate using the get date function and I'm going to set i equal to i plus 1 so let's just run this this should take a minute or something and then you know we should be through with that and oh it's almost done so let's let's try selecting a few values or from the table so there is a function called partition which will basically 
you know giving us the partition number i'm going to just use that for now it's dollar partition sorry and then i'm going to say um the cust partition function the function that we just created with the amp id as the partition number and also give me everything else from the partition table so what i'm basically doing is i'm just selecting everything with the partition numbers so if i run this you see that you know from 1 to 1000 let's see the switch over over here 1 to 9999 actually uh, it has put in partition number one the rest you can see it will be putting it in partition number two then when it reaches greater than 2000 it's going to put it in partition number three and so on and so forth so um, anything about you know 5000 would be put in the last partition so this is basically a very simple example how you can use partitioning of data there is you know there is a ui technique also like you know you could really just um, you know click on the table and then you can say storage and then you can really create a partition from here it'll just walk through a wizard it'll ask you you know what is your key partition column and such stuff and then you can really create your ski schemes and then partition functions etc and then partition your data accordingly um you know this is another wizard for managing your existing partitions but you know, it's kind of the same thing which we just talked about i just wanted to make sure that you know we go through it via query uh, the ui technique is also very simple and we could really leverage that too thanks for watching